friends over here. Thank you, Lord. The third one. You. soon. Well, it smells really good up here, so we're going to sing fast, and I won't talk a lot, and y'all say hi to one another real fast. to get everything else out. Hey, Abby. I don't know. Those I haven't put money with yet. Okay. You have a mark on your face. Probably. Good job, Hayden. Hayden, you're doing good. 
doing good. What's your mom's purse? What's he doing? Guarding oh. the purse with his life. <laughs> and he's still so Don't do that. You're gonna make me cry. And I gotta sing. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry and I gotta sing. <laughs> Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joys will never end. If that song doesn't get your heart pumping, you need to make a doctor's appointment because something is wrong. And, and perfect timing on the, the, the song. I'm, I'm, I think that's probably a, a theme song a lot of turkeys would like to be able to say this, this time of year. I'll fly away. Um, but they won't. So, all right. Uh, welcome this morning. I know we have a lot of visitors because we have an excitement of uh, baptism this morning. So. Praise God. Uh, so I want to welcome you to Maranatha Baptist Fellowship. My name is Pastor Sean, uh, the pastor here. Um, if, if you'll open up your bulletin on the far right-hand side, there's a tear-out. And it's a place where you can put your information so we'd have a record of your visit. Also, we'd know better how we could minister to and pray for you. Um, and for everybody else, we want to know your prayer requests so we can continue to pray for you as well. So that is not just for visitors. Uh, you can write your prayer requests and drop those in the blessing box on your way out in the back. So uh, speaking of blessings, do we have any praises this week? Well, Woo -hoo! Actually, very surprised that you were here this morning. It's a good surprise, but carried you carried her in. <laughs> <laughs> threw up over the shoulder and. <laughs> yeah, carried her in. No pun intended. Uh, all right, other praises. That's a that's that's awesome. Ooh, wow. Five years. <laughs> Congratulations. That's awesome. It's wonderful. Was that a prayer request or a praise? <laughs> Both. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other praises? I have one. Yes. Um, these last couple of weeks, this kid I go to school with and I work with has been asking a lot of questions about the Bible and religion and all in and of itself. So it's a praise and a prayer request because he's very confused with what he believes in right now, but he's sure been asking a lot of questions. So that's a praise. Amen. Praise God. Good. And, and keep up the witness. I mean, keep sharing with him as he's got questions. That's awesome. Uh. I didn't offend them. I said my piece, and they still like me. 
heard that this time. That's a praise for Marie and a prayer request for Jeff. <laughs> All right. Uh, other. Amen. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. It was v- really awesome. It was the the, the production manager is, came up to me uh, before the meeting, and he said, "Hey, you know, this time of year." He said, "We don't do it at every meeting, but you know, this time of year with, with Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the holidays, w- we'd really like to offer a prayer. Uh, would you mind praying uh, before the meeting and the meal?" I'm like, well, "Absolutely. I get to talk about God. Okay." Um, and so, uh, when they when, when they started the meeting, they said we're we're gonna have a prayer, uh, and, and you know we understand that not everybody believes this, and so if you would like to step out of the room, uh, it, because if you're offended or what, feel free to step out, and then somebody piped up and said, yeah, we'll pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> so. See, I just didn't ask. I just did it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. So pray, praise God that you know we've we've got some companies that are are not afraid uh, to pray. Uh, it's it's a blessing. Any other praises? <laughs> and we're glad. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other? praises all right and back, I'm going to go back to what Jeremy said offend away offend away you, 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 I, I bet everybody here knows your Bible better than you think you do we all think I just don't know enough but if somebody you're, you're talking to and they've got questions or they're saying something and they say well you know Jesus isn't really the only way Oprah um Yes, Jesus is, and I'm going to show you from Scripture where where it says that. Everybody knows that verse, and and, and we, that's where you show them. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. That's pretty exclusive, um, and, and so we can show them that. And so anyway, offend away. All right, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this this uh, day. I thank you for allowing me to wake up this morning. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you would be with us this morning as we sing praises to glorify and honor you. Lord, I pray that you would uh, be with us this week as we remember the things, all of the things that you've make us, uh, blessed us with this year um, to be thankful. Lord, I, I want to have a thankful heart every single day, but I thank you for this time of year that others will also start remembering why they're thankful and hopefully giving you honor for that and not the world. Your Lord, I just pray that you'd be with us this morning for this service, that it might glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray.
And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand and continue to worship. Um, we talked a little bit this morning in, in class. Uh, we set aside this, this day as kind of a, a time where we uh, formally thank God for the things that we're thankful for. And, and as many of you know, there was a lot of us missing last week and weren't here. And one of the things that, that I am thankful for, sometimes you don't know what you're thankful for until you don't have it. And not being here last week, we really missed this place missed you guys. So it's good to be back among his his believers, among his people, isn't it? Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. forever. Though we can be faithless, he is faithful. Amen.
took my sickness and healed all my pain. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to to be grateful for this morning.
as you are, and I will create a new you. Old things pass away, all things become new. Thank you for this time, Lord, that we give thanks. Thank you most of all for you, God. Thank you for all the blessings that you've given each of us, our families, the love that's there for this church, for our country, God. I just thank you for that. I just ask now, God, that as we continue this time, this season of thankfulness that we hear from Pastor Sean, God, that we'll always be so thankful, first and foremost, for your sacrifice on the cross. And may we never take that light. In Jesus' name. There is always room for improvisation. All right. Um, you know that we were gone last weekend. Um, myself and Jeremy and the elders and our wives, we went for a retreat. But it wasn't just a time to have fun. It was a time that we were going to discuss what we had been praying for quite some time. Uh, what does God have for Maranatha? What is the vision? And so last weekend we sat down. Uh, we started Sunday off with singing praises, and then we got to to the work of the Lord and discussing uh, that vision for this church. So I want to have all the elders, wives, everybody that was there last weekend come up. And instead of hearing a typical message this morning, we're going to share. Um, <clears throat> what we feel God's vision is for Maranatha. And we, we left encouraged. And I, and I hope that this <clears throat> uh, will encourage you. I hope you find a renewed and fresh excitement uh, for this upcoming year. And whatever ministry you're in, maybe it will encourage you to get into a ministry of your own or one that's already set that you'll 
take a part in uh, realizing this vision with us um, because it, it's not it's not us and, and you it's us um, we are all in the work of ministry um, whether you acknowledge that or not uh, that's between you and God but we are all in the work of ministry so uh, enough of me talking I'm going to let uh, Kevin and Joy go first because they're doing children's worship says I have to go first ladies first, ladies first. okay um, the thing that, that that this weekend brought to me through this was that we all have things that we are really good at that God gives us a desire to do and I need to focus more on that instead of so many things I get distracted and I don't do the main things that he's gifted me to do for me that is I'm sure you're all surprised at this it's children's ministry so I know you're shocked to hear that but I've got to stay really isn't that shocking I've got to stay more focused on seeing the work of children's growth in him that is what I have to keep my focus on a little bit more um, I'm very thankful that our church allows me to do work with our children and to do children's programs to do VBS to do Sunday school I'm so thankful I'm in a church that allows us to do those things and allows me to lead in the ways that I feel like the Lord's calling me to lead and I I thank the Lord that we had the opportunity for each of us to really think about where he is guiding each of us to minister more fully for him. Well, hey, I'm Kevin, and I normally don't look like this. <laughs> um, usually I have a nice, clean face, but we're doing a uh, fundraiser at uh, work, so it's no shave November. But anyway, so much for that. Uh, and you're going to probably see us uh, shed a few tears up here because that's what we did on Sunday because uh, a lot of us are really not walking where we're supposed to be walking and myself including that uh, as I was sitting there uh, in the hot tub <laughs> uh, Saturday night by myself this uh, young lady walks in, we were in the swimming pool. and uh, the rest of them were in the swimming pool. They left me by myself in the hot tub. And uh, she had been traveling throughout the day, and uh, when she came in there, I knew she was a little bit wound tight. And uh, she got in the hot tub there with me. I was the only one in there. And uh, she just started uh, overflowing. I mean, I w she just said, you know, I've been traveling all day, and it's – it was snowing where I was at, and I seen cars go off the road, and a guy almost hit me, and and uh, you know I'm just sitting there saying, mm -hmm, yeah, you know, I, yeah, okay, uh, praise God that you're all right, you know, and uh, you know she went on and on for about I don't know, probably about 30 minutes, just just pouring, her, you know, out to me because nobody else could talk to her. No, she didn't. She was not with anybody else, so I was the only one there that she could talk to. I don't know if I was if God was just putting me there to stay in the tub or what. I could have went over to the swimming pool where the rest of them was, but I, w I stayed there just because the water was nice and warm. But uh, so Joy said, "Well, we better get out and uh, go up to the room." So as I got out and Joy was coming over to the uh, hot tub, the lady said, "Hey, thanks for letting your husband listen to me." Because I needed someone to talk to, and I think uh, we all need to be better listeners, better doers. Especially myself, I'm not doing enough in the church. I'm not going out. Once I leave that door there, you see a sign there above that where the exit sign is says, "You are entering the mission field." You need to be going out and 
uh, sharing the gospel of Christ with others, just like I need to be doing that. And this church, we could have an overflow of people coming into this building. So I'm going to challenge you with myself to let's get out and do better doers for this upcoming year. So, and, what's that? and also, exactly, my wife says the same thing. Uh, this is, I've really been, uh, one thing I don't do is I don't sit down and read God's word enough. Because it's such, we think we have to lead busy lives. We think that we have to go out and constantly be going all the time. And we don't, we put God up here on that shelf and we leave him there. And we need to have him down here with us right here. And I don't do that enough. So pray, pray for me, pray for us as we uh, go into the new year looking for our uh, vision, what we want to be in the upcoming year. So thank you. I normally don't talk in front of people. But here's the deal. Here lately, they made us get up and work and talk in front of over 150 people. <laughs> I am a lot shorter than what they were. Um, I've had it laid on my heart that we need to be doing more mentoring to our younger generations. The ways of the world have come in where the church should be stepping up. Our young ladies don't know how to dress proper. They don't know how to cook a meal. They don't know how to be wives. Or even single girls living appropriately. And our young gentlemen are in the same boat, just on the other side of the gender line. So we're trying to figure out how we can come alongside those kids and show them the way God would have them live. If that means teaching them how to sew or cook, so be it. It's the simple things in life. And that's where my heart's at, and I'm going to be trying to figure out how to make that happen. I'm done. Um, I'm kind of going to add to what Kevin was talking about. Um, I. I haven't been in the Word as much as I should have been, and uh, Jeremy really pointed out a lot this weekend to us, and and uh, Doyle will probably talk a little bit, so I want to may take a little from him too. Uh, Doyle's been really into a lot of different readings, and uh, has mentioned about going out and and doing and serving, and and Jeremy's really been on with the reading the Word, and just like Kevin says. We need to be in here because we need to be in the Word. Just like you, we tell you, we're, we're standing up here telling you guys, we have to be in the Word, we have to be in the Word, and then we're not doing it. So um, accountability was a big thing that came out of last weekend as well. And um, we're, we've challenged each other to hold ourselves accountable, not just to God, but to each other. And I would extend that out to you guys as well. Uh, to challenge each other and to even ac hold us accountable. Um, with the, that being said, it's when we come in on a Sunday morning, rather than just talking about what you've done during the week and, and how things are going at work, is what have you been reading in the Bible? Or what has God done in your life this week? Or what have you been learning? And um, that really has stuck with us. I know we've been together about three or four times this week, and every time... I know I've I've asked Jeremy, Jeremy's asked me, pastors asked me, Craig's been asking about what we've been in the Word with. Um, so accountability has been one of the things that God spoke to us about uh, uh, that we've been lacking. Um, I think that's what I have for now. What God was working on me with was um, that we all need to be in prayer. We need to pray for the leadership of this church 
and we need to pray for everyone else. And um, so that was one of the things that God really laid on my heart was that we're not <coughs> praying for the congregation like we should, and I think vice versa could be true. So um, that's that was what really God put in my heart for that weekend was that we all need to be in prayer. Um, we did we did meet together. We did search out the the heart of the Lord this weekend, and that food smelled good. <laughs> and and now you've got the long winded one. Yeah. Um, but we we didn't spend lots and lots of time in the hot tub. We really did spend a lot of time together in prayer uh, as f to the the direction of this church. And what's encouraging to me is. We're going to be repeating a lot of things, which tells me that the Lord told us all a lot of the same things. And uh, if I was to, to break it down, um, I think he emphasized that we need to uh, be in the Word much, much, much more than, than we're in. And as Kevin has shared, it was kind of a, a confession and a repentance in that we haven't been in the Word ourselves. So how can we uh, be leaders in that if we'll not do it ourselves? So. Uh, so uh, one of the things is to be in the Word. Uh, one of the things uh, that we think God is leading us as a church is that we don't love on each other enough. And we're going to get an opportunity to do that today. We're going to get a uh, chance to go downstairs and fellowship with, with one another. And, se and thirdly, uh, that we should get out the walls of this church and minister to the outside. So that's kind of the direction that he had us going in. And I hate it when people read because it's hard to stay stay attention, but I'm going to read. Because no, I got my glasses. Bottom of my hat, but this this is kind of what uh, God's been. I'm going to I'm going to address the word thing, um, and I'm going to uh, read to you. If this is a book called Radical, but I'm going to read to you about uh, a church uh, in the third world country and kind of their view of scripture versus our view of scripture. And so bear with me, I'll try to read fast and uh, pay attention fast. It says, travel with me back to the underground house church scene I described in chapter 1. On my first day with these believers, they simply asked me to lead a Bible study. Please meet us tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I put some thoughts together for a short Bible study and went to the designated location where about 20 house church leaders were waiting. I don't remember when we started, but I do remember that eight hours later, we were still going strong. We would study one passage and then would ask about another that would lead to another topic, then to another, and by the end of the day, our conversations had ranged from visions and tongues to the Trinity and dreams. It was late in the evening and they wanted to continue studying, but they needed to get back to their homes. <clears throat> and the two main church leaders asked me, can we meet again tomorrow? I said, I'd be glad to, shall we meet at the same time? And they responded, no, we want to meet early in the morning. I said, okay, how long would you like to study? And they replied, all day. Thus began a process in which over the next 10 days for 8 to 12 hours a day, we would gather to study God's word. They were hungry. On the second day, I introduced these relatively new believers to the story of Nehemiah. I gave them the background of the history of the Bible books and showed them Nehemiah 8, the importance of God's word. After we took a short break, I saw the leaders talking intently about something in small groups. A few minutes later, one of them approached me. We have never learned of any of this truth before, and we want to learn more. She said, then she dropped the bomb. Would you be willing to teach us all the books of the Old Testament while you're here? <laughs> I laughed, smiling. I said, all the Old Testament. That would take a long time. By this time, others were joining in the conversation. They said, we will do whatever it takes. Most of us are farmers. And we work all day. But we will leave our fields unattended for the next couple of weeks if we can learn the Old Testament. So that's what we did. The next day I walked them through an overview of the Old Testament history. Then we started in Genesis. In the days that follow, we plowed through the highlights and main themes of every Old Testament book. Imagine teaching the, teaching the Song of Songs to a group of Asian believers, many of whom have never read the book before, and just praying they don't ask any questions. It's talking about the Song of Solomon. On the next to last day, we finished in Malachi. I had 12 more hours to teach, and I had no clue what to say. Once you've taught Habakkuk, what else is there to cover? 
So the last day I started teaching on a random subject, but within an hour I was interrupted by one of the leaders. We have a problem, he said. Worried that I had said something wrong, I responded, what's the matter? He replied, you've taught us the Old Testament, but you've not taught us the New Testament. I smiled, but he was serious. We would like to learn the New Testament today, he said. As other leaders across the room nodded, I had no choice for the next 11 hours. We walked briskly from Matthew to Revelation. Just imagine going to a worship gathering in one of those house churches, not an all-day training in the Word, just a normal three-hour worship service late in the evening. The Asian believer who is taking you gives you the instructions. Now listen to this church. Put on a dark pants and jacket with a hood on it. We will put you in the back of our car and drive you into the village. Please keep your hood on and your face down. When you arrive in the village under the cover of night, bear with me, I'm getting there. Another Asian believer meets you at the door of the car. Follow me, he says. With your hood over your head, you crawl out of the car, keeping your face towards the ground. You begin to walk with your eyes fixed on the feet of the man in front of you as he leads you down a long and winding path with a small flashlight. You hear more and more footsteps around you as you progress down the trail. Then finally you round the corner and walk into a small room. Despite its size, 60 believers have crammed into it. They're all ages. Precious little girls to 70 year old men. They are sitting on either side of the floor on small stools, lined shoulder to shoulder, huddled together with their Bibles in their laps. The roof is low, and one light bulb dangles from the middle of the ceiling as the, so the sole source of illumination. No sound system, no band, no guitar, no entertainment, no cushioned chairs, no heated air conditioned buildings, nothing but the people of God and the Word of God. And strangely, that's enough. God's word is enough for millions who gather in house churches just like this one. His word is enough for millions of other believers who huddle in African jungles, South American rainforests, and Middle Eastern cities. But, and this is the question this morning, church, is his word enough for us? As we think back on... Did you take my stuff? As we uh, think back on, on your week this week, I... I ask and believe me not condemningly because as a group of elders we said the same thing we don't spend the time in the word but as you think of of your week this week how much time of that week was spent in God's word and I don't mean as much as we love the daily bread I don't mean the daily bread reading the one where you can sit down for two minutes and go through it and go there there's my daily Bible reading these believers hungered so much for God's word they would sit down for 11 hours a day and I'll be honest with you Sorry, Sean, there's times when Sean will go 30 minutes and I'll be going, holy cow. We just don't have the hunger for God's word. And as a church, we have got to, we have got to get that back. We used to be called as believers, people of the word, people of the book. And that was because we so hungered and we so followed that word. And so um, God's call, I'm going to just talk mostly on that subject. God's call to us is, let's get back to the word. Let's get back to study. Study not just to study and check it off your list, but study to, to hear from God and to know where he's taking us in this church in the next year. And I'll finish with a, a few verses and then uh, give you maybe some specifics of what uh, we talked about. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing so far as division of the soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And this one particularly struck me because I think it's a, an age we are currently entering into and are in. It's in Amos uh, chapter 8. Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine for bread or thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and from north to the east. They go to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. A scary thing is coming upon us and is fast approaching is we are seeing this right now. It's voluntary. We have a voluntary famine for the word of the God. We just don't want, we don't read it. We don't spend the time in it. I don't read it, and I don't spend the time in it. So as a church, the Lord is telling us, get back to my word. You guys dig in and, and bear down because the world has given you a whole different story than what my word is, and we need to become people of the, of the word again. 
So these are the specifics. He said, what can we do to encourage the significance of reading God's Word? And here's where we'll let you guys be our accountability partners. Uh, I think Eric started talking about it. Lead by example. Make sure leaders are spending significant, significant, significant time in God's Word to hear from God, not just check, check off the list. How you guys can help with that, and here you go, kids. Have a good time. Every time you see an elder walk in the door, or any adult walk in the door of this church, you have our permission to say, what did you read in God's word this week, and what did he say to you? Got, got it, kids? And young adults? So there's our challenge, church. Be ready. We don't want to be those that go, nothing. So that's one way we can hold each other accountable. Share on Sunday mornings what God has showed us in his word. And this for us uh, seasoned believers. Pair up with a younger believer and show them how to read the Word. We just assume that if you come to church, you know how to study the Bible, you know how to, to read. Don't assume that and, and don't assume, assume that that's being done. Grab a young believer and say, hey, why don't you work with me for the next year and let's go through God's Word together. Uh, and, and lastly, we need to, uh, as a body of believers, develop more teachers. We've, we need more Sunday school classes, not less. We need to, um, that's where as a church we've kind of set it up, as Sunday school is where we get our teaching in the Word. So be in prayer, be in prayer that as a, as a body of believers we develop the kind of hunger for God's Word that they already have in third world countries. That that's a burning desire of our heart that we can't get out of bed in the morning before we do that. Uh, okay, I'm done. Um, that's just a challenge. That's where we saw uh, the Lord leading us was in, in those areas, and I think the Lord's pretty clear on that. And so, um, again, if you guys have thoughts and, and something that the Lord's sharing with you, please share with us. And I'm with Emma. I really don't want to be here. <laughs> be up here today. I like to be in front of people talking. <laughs> but <laughs> um, God is, is a God of order. But he's not a God of routine. He doesn't want us to live routine lives doing the same thing every day. He has given us a living word. He has given it as a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. He has given us his spirit in us. He has given us goodness and mercy following us every day of our lives. And we need to plug into that power. We are not... Um, powerless. We are not um, we like Deidre was saying prayer and because we are doing this Satan is coming against us very hard and the only way to combat that is through prayer and so we cover your prayers and our prayers for you and just pray that we get excited about um, not being routine but being real um, we have all experienced two miracles already this morning the first one uh, breath in our lungs when we woke up this morning and the second miracle is this day My, my father <laughs> prays every prayer that he prays he thanks the Lord for this day because it's a day that has never ever been used before and it's a miracle that it's given to us and how we handle this day anything in this day we have the power to live through um, so I guess that's all I have to say just 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 know that he is so real and that he lives in us and that he has given us everything we need to survive and, and just to share him with others.
we um, kind of started out Friday talking about programs and things that we've done and what we might want to do and things and then we kind of came to a halt with that and said well, let's quit trying to just slap things on the calendar and let's see what God really has and I was impressed that um, when Jesus was on this earth and he traveled with his disciples they went around from town to town place to place just kind of moving through the crowds teaching about God, teaching the, the truth, the gospel, and healing and serving whoever, whoever was there, you know, and, and people specifically. We have lots of stories in the Bible where people specifically came to Jesus and brought people for healing, but he healed others too. And, and that's how we need to be when we're out in our world is moving and telling people about God and his goodness and his power and and allowing him to use us to bring healing to lives. Sometimes it's physical healing. I've seen that happen in my time. Several people I've seen that have had physical healing. Um, sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it's mental. He can do it all if we'll just allow him to work through us and if we are willing to be there and and um, sometimes we don't go because we don't know what to say sometimes it's best if we don't say anything sometimes we need to just go and give someone a hug or some food or encouragement um, but we need to be out there with people and yes, we need to go out into the world. We need to be among people who don't go to church, people who don't know the Lord. But in Galatians, it tells us to do good unto all men, especially those who are of the household of faith. We also need to, among our own body and among even other church people we know from other churches or other, you know, around town that are Christians too, our first responsibility also is to the people of the household of faith. We need to help them and build them up. And that example of how we treat one another, how we care for one another, is the witness to the world. We we see a lot of government social programs that go on and stuff, but I honestly believe the church does what the church needs to do. There isn't so much need for all that stuff because if the church is taking care of its people, then those people will be healed and enabled to do more for themselves plus we also provide for them and share with them what we have in our abundance in this in this country we we are so blessed we have so much yet sometimes we don't think we have enough to spare to help someone else out that's needy <coughs> and we we need to look at ourselves in that respect as well and give from our abundance My my personal passion and um, ministry has for years been with the women, and I don't expect that to change. Um, we want to continue to minister to the women of our church. We want to continue to reach to the young, young women, to the teenage girls, and um, like Jenny shared, you know, that's part of our women's ministry. We, we do want to mentor our young women. Um, but Craig and I together, we have a passion for couples, for marriages. And we've done some marriage events, and we want to continue to bring God's Word and to show couples what God's Word has to say about marriage and, and the role of man and woman and what you get on TV or what you see modeled before you from Hollywood. All of that is not God's Word. And so you'll continue to see from from us um, encouragement to strengthen your marriages and see what God has to say about that and how, as a couple, um, you can be a witness to the world of Christ in the church. And that's just something that we do together as a couple. And, and then we each have our individual ministries too. So, Okay.
when you become a Christian, there's supposed to be a noticeable change in your life. People that you know are supposed to notice that change. They should be able to see that you've had a great big turnaround in your life and you've turned your back on some of the things you've done in the past and you're walking a different path. Another thing you're supposed to do, you need to rearrange your goals in life. What is important to you? A lot of you are a part of what's called the me generation. It's all about you. Well, sorry to say, the Bible says that's not the way it is. It's not about you. Your priority should be, number one, God should be number one in your life. Number two should be your family. Number three is you. So take a look at your life. See if you rearrange things a little bit. You need to spend time in the Word and in prayer. Your Bible is your instruction booklet for life. I was a teacher for over 25 years. I taught auto mechanics. They had something called a motor manual back in that day before computers. It had all the information you needed to repair any car out there. Well, your Bible has all the information needed to repair you your marriage, your finances, anything out there that needs fixed, it's in the Bible. You need to count the cost of anything you're doing as far as ministry, discipleship, or spending time in the Word. Are you doing what is the priority in your life? Is your priority when you get home from work to sit in front of the TV and watch stuff? Or is your priority to spend time in the Word? So think about that. The two things I would like to talk about more than anything else, love and serving God. I spent a lot of time the past couple days going through the Bible and looking for different things. I have uh, number one, John chapter 15, verses 12 and 13. You might want to get your uh, bulletin out and a pen and write some of these down because I, I think they're important and I would like you to look at them in the next couple days. So the first one was John chapter 15, verses 12 through 13. The second one, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. The next one, I found a lot in 1 John. 1 John 3, verses 10 to 11 and 16 to 18. And 1 John 4, verses 7 to 12. Those were all about love. Okay, we're to serve God. We're also to be serving in the body somewhere and doing things for the body, for our people in the church here. Uh, in John 13, it talks about our Lord Jesus washing his disciples' feet. During that time period, people walked around in sandals all the time so their feet were about as dirty as they could get. And our Lord didn't consider it beneath him during the time of the Last Supper to get down and wash all of his disciples' feet as a gesture of serving others and a gesture of forgiveness. So I feel that we should be serving others as much as, much as we can and serving the Lord. As I said earlier, you've got to count the cost of it. Are you willing to put in what's necessary in any ministry you're going to go into? I feel I, that we talked about discipleship more than anything else, I think, on our time together. If you're a young person, 
and you have a desire to spend time on the Lord, you need to find somebody to mentor you and teach you. So if you have that desire, do not be afraid to approach your leadership and ask them to do it. And it's us to, it's us, to, us to find the time necessary to do the things we're supposed to be doing, and discipleship is a big one. Okay. It's hard to go second to last because everything's pretty much been said, but um, I'm going to say uh, my piece, and then I'm, Jeremy's going to say the rest of what. I would say as well because he and I have been talking about it but when I was praying about what uh, was really driving the, where I felt the church should be going um, was definitely the discipleship part I think going out of the church is definitely something that we need to do and I'm on board with that but if we are not building up and feeding the people here in our church there's no way we can go out into our community and bring people in so my desire is not only for the women which I have a passion for from women to my little Lily's age to the women who are 100 years old. We need to be connecting together one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I personally am discipling somebody, and I have, I have somebody discipling me because I can't just pour into somebody and think that I'm going to get filled by myself. Um, Bible reading, obviously, is a huge deal. we got to do that. And uh, um, it's an easy thing. I mean, we're all, we all have phones here pretty much, and it's just a simple text message or phone call once a day or twice a week or um, whatever you are able to do. But it's a really easy thing. I think we make it too complicated. And then another thing. Oh, my brain just went dead. You're distracted. <laughs> um, what was it? I had it. I was like, there's two things. Did I? Okay, I can be done. But um, anyways, I as we sit up here and we spout things out to you and say, well, we need to be doing this as a church, we need to be doing this as a church, I feel like maybe you in the audience are like, oh my goodness. There are a lot of things we're not doing that we should be doing, and we feel bogged down maybe a little bit by that. And I just want to encourage you to not feel that way. Because it's really, it's really simple. It really is. I mean... This thing is, is like any other book, you, and all of us in here can read, I believe. It's, it's a simple opening this up and reading it. And if any of you have been in this, you know you want more of it. Yeah. So get in it. It's good stuff. I mean, I, I feel I, the days I don't, it's just ridiculous that I don't get in it because... Um, I don't know how I get through the day sometimes with three ch children in my house all the time. But <laughs> um, I encourage you to just don't be bogged down by what we're saying. Prayer is a simple thing. You can do it whenever you want to do it. You don't have to have your eyes closed. You can be on flat on the floor if you want to. It's not something that has a requirement. Just do it. So And be encouraging to one of other. Oh, that was the other thing. Sweet. Thank you, Jesus. Um, the other thing I was thinking was Jeremy and I are in a ministry kind of together. I'm also on the women's ministry. We can't do it by ourselves. Pastor was talking about how 10% or the 10th of the church are what are leading the church, and it should not be that way. I mean, Jeremy and I are only two people, and we, on our biggest days in our youth group, we have 15 kids. There is no way that we can have one-on-one -on -one time and have time for our family and mentor these kids truthfully. Because we only get them for, what, two hours, two and a half hours on Wednesdays and then and two hours on Sundays and mor Sunday morning an hour. It, that's nothing. And, and some of these kids are not getting what they need at home. So we need you to come in and help us. Um, I have one of our youth girls. I would love to see some of you ladies in the church pick up these youth girls and start mentoring them and loving on them. And it's so easy. They're not asking for much from us. They're not asking for hours of our time. They're just asking for us to give them a, a note of encouragement or to tell them where we are spiritually and just l be honest with them, saying, I am stinking at getting in the Word. I feel bogged down by the world. Satan is attacking me. And they will be encouraged by that because they're like, oh, 
you're like 40 and you're dealing with that and I'm 16 I thought I was you know it's just I'm young and I thought you had it all together no even when we're 80 we're still not going to have it all together and that's fine because we're hu stupid humans so I just encourage you even the men of the church grab a hold of the guys in the church even if it's somebody that's 20 years older than you or 30 years younger than you just grab somebody that you feel God's calling you to I mean Grancy still needs to be loved on don't you Grancy and my little Emma needs to be loved on not just by her mama not just by her daddy she needs somebody else in the church to show to show her love so I just want to encourage you to do that and once you get loved on, you're going to want to love on somebody. I mean, it's just contagious. Maybe it's just me, but. <laughs> and start all over. Um, let's see. The purpose of this is to convey the vision uh, that God's laid on our hearts. Um, and our meeting came to a screeching halt, and we decided to go around the room and ask. Um, and we came up with prayer, service, discipleship, and accountability to reading God's Word. Um, that's where God is leading our leadership. Um, your job as the church is to jump on board with that. Now, I understand that's uh, difficult when your leadership isn't doing it. Um, and that was... I think part of our leadership's problem is uh, we're just not in the Word. Um, I'll be honest, and I'm going to tell you that our leadership is not where we need to be reading our Bible, um, and that's an issue. Um, how can I expect you as a church to read your Bible if I'm not reading my Bible? Um, how can our leadership expect the church to be on fire and grow when we're not on fire and growing? Um, and so accountability to reading God's Word was um, really, really big. Discipleship. Um, the, the accountability to reading God's Word is not only to you, um, excuse me, but it's to everybody up here. Um, on our elders' meetings, uh, I've volunteered myself because we do this in the youth group. We start Sunday, Sunday night, and Wednesday night with usually a question, and I let somebody pick who's going to start. And the question is, what are you reading in your Bible? Where are you at in the story? Um, some of them will go, well, I'm reading this. Um, some of them will go, I'm reading this. Uh, a few of them will go, nothing. The follow-up question to that is why? Why aren't you reading your Bible? Uh, for teenagers, it's a wide array. Most of it is because they're too busy. Um, they've got it easy. As adults, we know teenagers have it easy. Um, but you have it just as easy. Um, but we can't expect you to do something we're not willing to do. We can't expect you as a church to go somewhere we're not willing to go. Um, so as a believer in Christ, uh, you have the authority and the responsibility to hold other believers accountable. You're not judging them. You're not condemning them or whatnot. Um, you're just holding them accountable. And so as a believer, I've given the youth group permission to hold me accountable to read my Bible, and they do, believe me. Uh, it gets to me in the circle, and I, there are days where I have to go, well, I haven't read, and I get a bunch of, ah, what, why, and, and I have to come up with an excuse that's really not an excuse. Um, and so, as the leadership, we're giving you um, permission to hold us accountable. Um, ask us what we're reading, and if I'm telling you, if these guys say nothing or they haven't read, make them feel a little bit guilty. You have my permission to do that. They're the leaders of the church. They're held to a higher standard. We need to do that. We need to be holding our leaders to that standard that God has. They need to be in the Bible. They need to be reading. They need to be praying. We need to be serving. And if they're not doing it, tell them. You have my permission to say that. You have my permission to say that about me. Um, but note that from this point out, as we begin to read the Bible, we're expecting you to read the Bible. Um, as we begin to serve, we're expecting you to serve. As we begin to pray, we're expecting you to pray. And as we begin to disciple other people one-on-one -on -one or, or in groups, we're expecting you to do that. So it's not something that we're going to, we came up with this vision, and this is what we want you to do, now go do it. 
it's we're going to expect you to follow us. That's as a leader, we're going to expect you to, to get in line behind us and follow us. We're not going to push you out in front and say, go do it, be done with it, and peace out. Um, we're expecting you to follow us. Simple. Yeah. And there, re- there was a reason I, I chose to go last. <clears throat> um, a couple reasons. But one, I, I wanted to, to take notes to just kind of follow up. I'm not going to rehash everything that's been said because it, it's been said. But um, like Jeremy said, the, the, <clears throat> the things that came out, what's the vision uh, of the church? And, and prayer, discipleship, service. And, and we've constantly heard we need to be in the Word. And then we hear this word accountability. Accountability is at the top of all of them because we need, we need to hold each other accountable, not just being in the Word, but we need to hold each other accountable. Have you been praying? We need to hold each other accountable. Have you been serving? What have you done to bless somebody's life this week in some form of service? It doesn't have to be much. It can be writing a, a, a note to somebody and sending it in the mail. A handwritten note, not an email. An actual handwritten note that takes time to sit down, write out, lick a stamp, put it on, and mail it. Can be And support the postal service. And it, it can be something as simple as that. But we need to hold each of us, hold me accountable. What, what have you done to bless somebody's life this week in service? And we need to hold each other, you've heard it over and over, be accountable to being in the Word. So being in the Word, service, prayer, discipleship. Jeremy said, you know, grab onto somebody, pour into their lives. Discipleship, it, it's not hard. It's, I mean, it's time-consuming. And, and that is something that hasn't been mentioned yet. Well, to an extent it has because of, of what Doyle read. There is a cost to being a Christian. There is a cost to following Jesus Christ. And it's expensive. I'm going to read you what the cost is. And you can write this one down too. Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 57. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Following Christ is a high stakes decision. There are consequences. I mean, there, there are, it's Jeremy mentioned it. When, when, when you start discipling people, Satan will attack. Since we've had this meeting, Satan has already started to attack because Satan does not like the decisions and the discussions that we had last week, the changed hearts, the changed, uh, the way we look at things, Satan does not like it. When you decide to do what some of these believers did in, in this uh, you know, country in Asia, and, and you get into the Word, you may get attacked because there's a cost, but it's worth it because it's Jesus Christ. One of the things that I brought out last weekend was how many churches today can you look at and say that's how they did it in the New Testament? And I would venture to say very few. This is the fellowship of, of the New Testament church. Acts verse, or chapter 2, starting in verse 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship. I'm going to stop there. They devoted themselves to teaching. They were in the Word. 
this book where the, 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 these believers said, can, can, you te- can you teach us tomorrow? Well, what time? Early in the morning. Well, how long do you want to go? 11 or 12? Yeah, all day. 11 or 12 hours. They studied God's word. So then they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Fellowship and prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their numbers day by day who were being saved. And and I won't belabor uh, this, but I want to go through this a little bit. Um, Fellowship. And, and, And people have brought up you know, over the past year, you know, we used to get together more as a church and fellowship. And I would like to do that more. Today, this this meal after after church is is great. It's a great time that we can spend together. We can grow with one another. We can build relationships with one another. And so this next year, and I'm going to probably hear some, uh, but this next year on the fourth Sunday when we normally have CC Sunday we're each taking a, a, one of those fourth Sundays and we're going, going to organize a meal in Fellowship Hall instead of CC's CC's one, it, I mean cardboard pizza two, it's, it's loud how, how, how much fellowship are you getting would it not be much better to be here and now you can go around the room and fellowship or you can sit with somebody completely different next month true fellowship so I'm excited for that um, we, we can fellowship more frequently as believers in Christ um, it says uh, and all who believed were together and had all things in common that says to me that there was unity there was harmony I, I think a, a lot of times and, and I'm, as, I'm just as guilty as anybody. Um, sometimes our ministries cross paths and we're going in opposite directions and we don't have a common goal in mind. And the right hand is not knowing what the left hand is doing, which the Bible says when you're giving, that's a good thing, but not when you're trying to minister and serve others, when you're trying to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. Letty mentioned it. Um, part of our services is giving. Giving to those who have need, first inside the church and then outside the church. We're to take care of, of those believers in the church saints and then also to those outside the church. It says and day by day attending the temple together breaking bread and they're in their homes and received food with glad and generous hearts um, you know we, we haven't had people out to our house very often um, and, and we, we this that's been a, a dream of ours is to be able to do that and we're hoping soon the sheetrock will be done the paint will be done the, and we'll be able to do that we would kind of like to have a couple functioning bathrooms and not just one but um, small groups if, if, if you're willing have a small group invite people over I mean you don't have to do all the cooking it can be a smorgasbord everybody bring a different dish uh, you know uh, just fellowship with one another but it says praising God and having favor with all people now it, that all people it's not just all the people in the church. It's all people. Saved, unsaved, black, white, purple, yellow, plaid. All people. Um, and, and the reason I know it's not just talking about believers is because the very next sentence says, And the Lord added to their numbers day by day those who were saved. 
When's the last time we invited somebody from work to our house for a Bible study or food? I haven't in ages. Police department time, probably. We need to reach out and invite people. Invite people that we deal with in the store, the people that we deal with in, our, in the restaurants, the people that we deal with at our work, our neighbors. Invite them to church. Let them know, hey, we're having dinner after church Sunday. We would love for you to come. Don't worry about bringing anything. Just bring yourself and your family. Bring people to church. Invite them to church. Invite them to your home so you can share a meal with them and then possibly share the gospel. So that's um, kind of the vision that I, I see is I would like us to become a church that people can look at and say, that's a New Testament church. All right. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time this morning. I thank you for um, last weekend. And I thank you for kicking us in the shorts. Lord, we needed it. We needed to see um, that we ourselves as the leadership of the church are not being as dedicated to you as we should. We weren't being as dedicated as maybe we were even asking others to be. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I, I just pray that all of us have come to that point in our lives um, through, through last weekend that we've asked forgiveness, that we've repented of that, that we've made that change in our lives, that we will be more dedicated and, and willing to be held accountable in the areas of prayer, service, discipleship, and being in God's Word. Lord, I pray for this church. I pray for its members. Lord, I just pray that uh, through today's uh, sharing uh, of, of the elders to, to, the, to the people, Lord, that you would create in them an excitement, a renewed uh, vision as well, and encouragement. Lord, we, the last thing we wanted was to be a downer this morning. We wanted this to be an encouraging time. And, Lord, I just pray that that's what this will be. Lord, I just pray uh, for the food that's uh, downstairs that uh, we're about ready to eat. Lord, I just pray and thank you for the hands that have blessed it. Lord, I just pray that you would uh, bless them. Lord, I just ask you also bless the food to nourish from our bodies. Lord, as before we leave, if there are any decisions to be made, Lord, I pray that you would uh, call, that, call whoever you're speaking to. Prick their heart and allow them to make that decision. It's in Jesus' name.